This week's episode of MGTOWN is brought to you by The Dragon's Treasure, a haven for anime and tea lovers. The Dragon's Treasure combines two popular aspects of Japanese culture, anime and tea. Check out which teas represent your character or series. Tea makes an excellent gift for yourself or that someone special in your life. Visit thedragonstreasure.com and use coupon code MGTOWN, that's M-I-G-T-O-W-N, for 10% off your order. Links will be below in the description. Welcome to MGTOWN, the only podcast featuring Drexel every week on the week and released every Friday. I am producer Tim, and with me is the star of the show, Drexel, go ahead, introduce yourself. What do people need to know about you? They need to know that I'm not a fucking cook. We're taking down the simps, where they appear, wherever they appear, all night, all day. Look, man, simps are lurking, right? They're hiding everywhere, on online platforms, at your workplace, uh, you know, at the gyms when they open, even when they're closed. They're simps right now at the fucking gym, right now, looking for somebody, right? Wherever they may be, they must be found and dealt with. So we released episode one. Uh, when, when everyone who's hearing this will hear it on Friday. And we released episode one one week ago today. I've been sending you the statistics of who's listening, how often they're listening. Did you, Drex, did you ever imagine? Did you ever imagine that 3,000 people would be thirsting to hear you talking on a potato? No, you know what? It's uh, it, It's been a shock, right? I'm very humbled by it. I'm very appreciative and grateful for it. Because as you know... The uh, the fans have been you know irking me on Nick's show for over well over a year now, right? Yeah. So 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 they, they you know people keep saying yeah, Drex, when is, when is it coming? When is it coming? When is it coming? I said, look, man, when I get the equipment, clean out the fucking office. So the office is finally clean. I gotta go get a better chair. But one of the things that I always thought of was to just have a, a space where you know I, I love uh, you know fan interaction, right? Fan engagement because. I didn't know uh, that, I, that I had, you know, fans like that, right? Like, uh, you know, Nick obviously is the guy who put me on. That's the guy I'm grateful for, too, every day. And there were people who come from all over the world, right? So here's a guy from Germany. Here's a guy from wherever. You see what I'm saying? He's in the UK. This guy's in, in America. And they're telling you these stories, man. You're kind of like, holy shit, man. Like, you don't realize... Uh, you know, how much people can relate to you and, and be influenced by you. And, and they, you know, the influence goes both ways where you start to realize, man, that a lot of people out there are, are you know, basically we're in a gynocentric clown world, right? Oh, is it ever? It, 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 it's horrible, right? So, so you know, and, and Tim, I always told you, I said, one of the things that got me to ever go on YouTube on Nick's show and get the idea myself was I was looking at my own favorite content creators, right? And I said, I said, I wanted to say there has to be a, a place out there where someone gets the real, right? Because mm-hmm. every, you know, everyone's always kind of, you know, dodging around questions and, you know, nobody wants to really say certain things. And my thing is, look, man, fuck that. You know, you, you come to ask me a question, you know I'm going to give you a real answer every time. You see what I'm saying? So I, I just, I wanted, I just, I, all I ever wanted was to say, look, man, you come here, you're going to get real answers. Like, even when that girl on Nick's show, Anna, called in, she said it herself. There's no one that's honest. Right? We're out there breaking that trend. We're going we're gonna to be so honest, you're going to get overdosed on honesty. <laughs> look, man, fear, fear not. Look, man, I already know what's coming. I mean, this will probably be our, our second to last episode before, you know, I get axed by Susan. She, she's going to send the people after me, right? But, I mean, this, this is a shout out to Susan. Hey, you come holler at me, man. I'll go ahead and get fucking blow her back out. I already told you. Anytime Susan wants it. Anytime. Because, see, look, look here's the thing. I'm willing to take one for the team. You see what I'm saying? Okay. I'm, I'm willing to take one for the bros. Look, look, I Googled pictures of Susan, right? And I said, eh. Yeah, this is an absolute great way to get on her good side. She she's not the uh, what's the term we use the, the the traditional beauty, right? Oh God, 
If there's ever a term that I've hated more than anything else in the world, the idea that, well, you're not traditionally beautiful, or I'm not, tra- I'm not a traditional man. Yep. You are what you are, right? You are what you are. You are who you are. So my thing is, if, if it takes me smashing Susan, I would do it daily if that's what it took to make sure that guys aren't deplatformed. You see what I'm saying? Now, I can't imagine YouTube is so racist to deplatform an African-American and a Native American uh, run show. Man, play the race card. Play the race card wherever it gets you the advantage. And this is life advice to all the young men out there. Whatever advantage you have, use it. Yeah. So I feel bad for the, the, the cis white male, right? He's yeah. fucked. Yeah, he's yeah, you're totally done. hopeless. I was looking at the uh, comments and uh, some of the statistics from episode one. Holy shit. 62 downloads in the U.S. alone. Uh, 95 downloads on um, various... Uh, so we host the audio-only files on Libsyn, uh, which distributes those files out to the various podcast providers like Spotify, iTunes, mm-hmm. Google Podcasts. We've got 95 downloads from all of those streams. Oh, wow. And we got 3,000 views on YouTube for episode one. 2,800 subscribers. Um, over 200 comments were left on episode one. I'm going through them right now. Um, oh, fully, wow. fu- fully half of them are either asking you about the Thad story or th- making an allusion to your potato microphone. Will you, will you release the Thad story for episode two in... Like, these guys are thirsty, man. They're thirsty. They're, they've been walking through the desert. Okay, let, let me give you guys a little, a little, uh, a, a quick little uh, uh, tidbit about the Thad story, right? So, the, the co-star of the Thad story, right? I, I text her, and I asked her, I said, hey, do you have, you know, Google Hangouts or, you know, or, or Hangouts or Google Meet, right? And she's like, well, why? And I said, well, look. My my audience wants to know about the Thad story. I'd like to have you as my guest, right? But she was not really feeling it. But like I said, I'll, I'll probably just give her a call and be like, look, you don't have to, you know, dox yourself or anything. Just kind of, because the story is that much, you know how sometimes a story is that much better when the person who was physically there with you is kind of like chiming in like, oh, and then this happened. And this is what I was saying. Yeah. The shit was so out of control, man. Like I said, for, for those who know, don't worry, the Thad story is coming. Let me talk to my girl and, and see what we can work out. Uh, you know, probably like an audio feed. Because when you have a story that get, that leads you with ED for for 11 months, you know it's fucked up, right? <laughs> oh, great. So you've teased everyone. You're blue balling 3,000 people right now. Oh, man. I, I, I'm a horrible person, man. I, I know you guys have been good to me. I have not been good to you guys, man. I'm giving you guys little tidbits. I'm, this is pre-cum. You guys are out there, fucking, they're thirsting, and I'm giving them nothing but pre-cum. Love it. And I'm a horrible guy. But I know you guys want the full money shot, but don't worry. I'm going to talk to my girl. I'm going to give her a call the day after the show. I'm going to talk to her, see what we can work out, because, man, it, th- there's, there's so many stories. And I had so many, uh, there were some guys out there, you know, I had put it out, uh, I put it out there. I said, you know, what would you guys like, you know, like topics you want me to discuss and stuff. Like, and guys were saying stuff like, hey, man, we want more stories like what happened to Texas, right? All of the podcasters I look up to, they just tell stories. Yeah, it, it just it, Joe Rogan is known for that, especially his guests, right? And you start to learn that a lot of times it's just a matter of some of it is just luck, right? Because uh, we'll look at it like this. You're going to get a story either way. Like I'll give you a prime example. The Texas story, right? Homegirl fucks up and gets arrested and it becomes a shit show, right? But I want you to ask yourself this question. What would have happened if everything would have moved smoothly, right? Wouldn't that have just been a different story? You, you see what I'm saying? Okay, so, so think of it like this. Suppose everything goes right. We hop on a plane. We go to Texas. We, 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 you know, we, we pull into DFW. Get out the plane. Go get ready. It's going to be a story leading up to the gangbang, right? Oh, yeah. Then... The gangbang itself is a story, whether it is a good one or a bad one. Oh, and if anyone out there is questioning, well, well Trex, what's a bad gangbang? Oh, well, let me tell you. All it takes is one guy to fuck everything up in a gangbang. The one dude, right? And there's always that one guy, right? We all know, we all know who it is. God damn it, Fred. <laughs> everyone knows who it is, right? 
And, and, and you know, like deep, deep down, I think every guy knows. I want you to just pull out your phone right now, scroll through your contacts, and pick out a porn star that you would you would love to smash, right? And then say, she invited you and four of your best friends to come and smash her also, right? All right, who are you looking at? Are you looking at Riley Reed, Adriana Chechik? So, so whoever, whoever, uh, whoever your porn star of choice is, she says, come over to my place and you and your guys can smash. You're thinking, well, this is great. This is great. When you go into your phone, deep down, you kind of know, don't you? You know who to invite, but deep down, you kind of know one of these guys might fuck up and say or do something stupid, right? Yep. You know the guy. And you know, so so basically what ends up happening is you're hoping for the best, right? You're going, God damn all right, it, I'm gonna, Fred. It's God all your damn fault, it. Fred. I, Fred, I, I'm going to invite you. Don't make what happened last time happen this time. You promised me that you went to rehab, that you're clean now. Everything is good, right? So now we got to go and blow out uh, uh, Hitomi Tanaka's back, right? We got to go ahead and blow this back out. These guys will find a way. This is, like, this is what happens, man. There's so many guys out there that find a way to fuck up. And I said, bro, all you had to do, because, okay, do you remember when I told you on Nick's show? I said, this girl had one job in life. Show up, get fucked, leave. Well, guess what? Dudes are the same way. All you have to do as a guy, show up, blow her back out, bust a nut, and leave. Guys can't even do that these days. These guys find ways to fuck up, just like the women find ways to fuck up. Now, do guys get arrested? Eh. That, that might have to do with, like, there are people out there, just renting a hooker isn't good enough. They want to feel like they earned it somehow. Like, they got to take the hooker out to supper or something. Oh, God, yeah, you don't want to do the Russell Greer. Take her, take her to Olive Garden. <laughs> Look, man, any story that you can tell as a man that begins or ends with prostitution in Olive Garden, you failed at life. Okay? <laughs> you, you fucked up. Yep. You fucked up. Because no story should involve prostitution and Olive Garden. You see what I'm saying? Shout out to Russell Greer. If you don't know the story, search up uh, Nick Rackett's uh, or Nick Rakata's video on Russell Greer. So I, I go to do Nick's show, and he tells me about Russell Greer. And I'm looking, I'm reading the chat as he, you know, Nick is kind of shaking his head. I'm like, who the hell is Russell Greer? And a dude puts in the chat, I'll never forget, it said, Russell Greer's fall is biblical. I'm like, dude, like, who is this guy? So when Nick tells the story, I'm thinking to myself, how does this, like, how do you become this guy, right? How do you fuck up this bad at life? You see what I'm saying? At what point have you fucked up so bad at life that you do it on purpose? True, true. Like, I, part of me thinks he does it on purpose. I believe so. Well, here's the thing, though. Some people are walking, breathing fuck-ups, right? They just are. Like, like they, they, they can't help themselves. You see what I'm saying? So what ends up happening is, if, if I take a like, like, prime example, if I were to ask you to hang out with Charlie Sheen in 2003, Anytime you hang out with Charlie Sheen, you know something is going to happen if there's cocaine and hookers involved, right? So if you understand that, then you know, look, dude, he's not, tr he's not trolling. This is just who Charlie Sheen is. You see what I'm saying? Yep. So, so, so if you invite him to it, like, so, so if I'm having a party, I'm saying, look, man, I'm having a party. It's just a basic barbecue. We're just having some friends over. Well, if you invite Charlie Sheen in 2003, you should know what's going to happen. He's not coming alone, right? He's going to show up with hookers and blow. From that point forward, whatever happens, that was on you, bro, right? Because you invited him. You knew what you were getting into. You, you, you knew what you were getting into. So, so it's like, you can't blame Charlie. It's like, well, I did invite Charlie. I fucked up. And, you know, now you got a, a, you know, a classic two and a half men episode in real life. You see what I'm saying? It's like smashing a redhead, right? And then being shocked that she's batshit insane. She's crazy. Completely fucking crazy. You know what? I, I'm not going to lie to you, man. I, I have a problem with the redhead thing. Redheads make up, I think it's, is it 1% of Earth's population is redheaded, right? 1%? Now, I want more redheads. The problem is, of course, you know, most of them look like complete dog shit. You, you occasionally get lucky, right? And we need to get lucky more often. Like our girl from Boy Meets World, Maitland Ward, who became a porn star. Shout out to Maitland Ward, by the way. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing it. 
Oh, her, her black scenes, black raw, Maitland Ward is a godsend. Okay. I want more Hollywood celebrities to, to go ahead and become porn stars. I mean, it's better for everybody. Trust me. Oh yeah. And the thing is, is that when you come, when it comes to redhead, right, you're, you're in this, you're in this kind of scenario where you sit down and you're thinking to yourself, I hope she doesn't wind up crazy. But what do you always know, Tim, deep down? What do you They're know? all crazy. It's not just right. They're all crazy. It's not right there, right? You know, right? So, so when I was on Nick's show and I, uh, I, I told the story about what happened to, uh, you know, my, my friend uh, Fee, right? So Fee asked me, she said, where do you meet these girls? How are these girls always crazy? I said, they're all crazy. And so she asked me last night, she goes, well, do you think I'm crazy? I said, the best you can hope for as a woman on the crazy scale is a three to four. That's the best a woman can ever be, right? Because at some point, all she needs is a trigger. A guy doesn't have to have a trigger. A guy holds it in like, yep, yeah, this is fucked up, but I'm going to move on. But women have to do crazy shit. Sometimes it's just the time of the month. That's the trigger. Time, time of the month. And, and remember, and usually it, it, uh, things get kind of bunched together, right? A, a few things get coupled up. It's the time of the month. Plus, uh, you know, her, her cat got sick. Or she got cut off in traffic. She got cut off in traffic while answering a text that... Uh, you know, maybe some one of her friends got stood up last night, but it's because she doesn't know that the friend was she was fucking the dude, right? So she didn't get stood up. She was fucking her friend's uh, a booty call, right? So now she's dealing with that shit. So then when she gets with you, you don't. She's bringing five hundred emotions to the scenario, right? Guys usually aren't bringing too much from their outside life into the bedroom. Usually they just bring the bedroom to the bedroom. So therein lies a problem, right? And then with a redhead, you're just dealing with an extra level of crazy. Now, the problem is, of course, as you know, redheads naturally, because they, they're so rare, men are naturally going to be more attracted to what's rare, right? You don't see them, right? Like, so, so, so when you finally get a chance to get one, oh my God, a redhead. Oh shit. I got to make this count. Now, when you make it count, be, be sure. It's only going to end bad. I, let me ask you this. Do, have you ever known anybody who had a friend with Benz who was a redhead that, that, that like lasted long term? Never, right? No, can't think of one. No, 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 no. You know a guy who can go, oh, yeah, I was, do, I was, I was smashing this blonde for you know, six months, a year, or whatever, right? Yep. I, or we're, we're, I'm, I'm friend with Benz with this brunette. I'm friend with Benz with this, this uh, raven hair chick, right? Cool. No one is friend with Benz with a fucking redhead. Right? Not nope. It can't happen. It can't happen. It won't happen. Listen, this is this is that time, Tim, where I want to reach out to my redhead, my redheaded women out there, right? My gingers. My true gingers. I listen, I don't want to see any of this. You dyed your hair or you have streaks. I don't want streaks. I want the carpet to match the drapes. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you know, and while we're on this topic, all redheads should have a bush. Every single one. In fact, there should be a rule that states if you are redheaded, you have to have a bush. And I know exactly how we enforce this rule. Uh, we we need a we need the FBI on the case, a female body inspector. Absolutely. And when they do that full cavity search, you just make sure like is the bush there. And here, here's the thing though, what, what bothers me: if you're a redhead, it, okay, let's say you aren't completely crazy. Don't you have to know this about being a redhead? That, that everyone's going to look at you like, oh my God, it's a unicorn, right? I think they know, but then they want to deny. It's this weird, it's going to be this weird meta argument where they know they are as rare as they are, but they also want to deny they are as rare as they are. They just end up coming out just lost and confused. Like an asteroid just uh, tumbling around in space. Nowhere to go. Well, do you know what's sad about that? I'm going to be honest with you. Too many redheads are ashamed of being redheads, right? Because women in general have no confidence, but especially redheads, right? So a lot of redheads dye their hair, right? Yeah. Uh, do you remember that show, that 70s show? You remember that one? I didn't watch it very often, but I know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At some point, everyone bumped into the show. and oh, Well, Donna on the show, the redhead, right? Uh, Laura Prepon, I think is her name. I think she might be a Canadian, isn't she? Maybe. I mean, if you think she's a Canadian, it's usually true. 
Canada shares its best and brightest with America. You guys should be so lucky. Every time we end up with it, with something terrible, I know it came from Canada. Like the first time I heard Justin Bieber, I'm like, who the fuck is this kid? And someone's like, relax, dude, he's Canadian. I'm like, ah, oh, well. Because someone had said something about like, you know, Usher, right? They said, oh yeah, Usher has this kid. And I said, Usher? But when I heard him, I'm like, who the fuck, who is this? Okay, first of all, what is Usher doing hanging around with like 14-year-old white boys? Oh, look, man, the rituals, man. We, we all know about the rituals. That's all I'm going to say about it. So what ends up happening is I hear Usher. I'm thinking, ah, this is terrible. And when I go back to these redheads, right, that deny, they, they deny it. I think back to that 70s show. And when I saw her later, she was a blonde. And a lot of redheads dye their hair blonde, right? Women in general dye their hair blonde. Let me give you guys a newsflash. This is for the ladies out there. And for the guys listening who want to who, who communicate with women, tell them that whatever they are to own it. If you're a redhead, own it. If you're a brunette, own it. Stop trying to be like all other women. When you, and, and you, uh, you know what, Tim? You see this with black women and Asians. I, I got to throw some Asian chicks under the bus and Latinas under the bus. Hell, I could really throw all of them under the bus. Stop going blonde, okay? If you are not naturally blonde, don't go blonde. Are, are you from Iran? Blonde is not your look. Are you from Gary, Indiana? Blonde is not your look. You see what I'm saying? Stop. No, for sure. But, but you see that, right? Yeah, I definitely see that. And uh, it, the idea of being something you're not, like, this is part and parcel of being in the dating world. Now, most normal men, when they go out to the bar, or when they hit up chicks on Tinder, they change who they are just a little bit. Sometimes it's subtle. Sometimes it's a little more obvious, but no one ever delivers who they actually are to the opposite sex. It's always a facade of lies and deceit. Yeah. Do you know, I had a, uh, I had a coworker years ago. She had the perfect uh, explanation. She said, do you know who you're meeting when you, when you show up on that date, you're meeting their representative, their booking agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so when you show up, you're meeting the representative. Now, now there's lots of reasons why this is on both sides, right? Like, I, I was just talking to my girl, Jojo, uh, yesterday. And we had this, this very conversation. And we were talking about, I remember two days ago. And we're talking about the issue of, uh, you know, when, when women press guys about what they do for a living, right? And she's like, you know, you know, guys are acting shady. I go, it's not that guys are acting shady. Now, Tim, you, you know this. All the guys... From all, what do you say, 62 countries? All guys from 62 countries around the world know this is 100% accurate. The reason you don't want to tell a girl what you do for a living, or God forbid, where you work exactly, what is the reason, Tim? Why? Well, first of all, I don't want her showing up at my work. Here's my post office box number. Uh, this is where we're going to meet up to smash. Yep. The dumpster behind the 7-Eleven. You got damn right. It smells just like some of these damn broads smell, right? So my thing is this, at the end of the day, we've gotten to a point now where women are going to lie about everything anyway, but here's the thing, here's the difference. To men, we only care about what? Her sexual health and is she going to shut up me to me, right? So long as she's not batshit crazy and going to be a false accuser and she's sexually clean at the time that we smash, we don't care about your job. We don't care about how much money you make. We don't care what countries you travel to. Nothing about you is really that important, right? And if it's a smash and dash, I also don't give a shit if you're on OnlyFans. I, I don't. Look, in, in fact, I'm happy you're on OnlyFans because now you're, gonna, you're not going to try to ask me for, uh, oh, I forgot my purse. <laughs> Bitch, you better wash dishes or suck dick, one or the other. But this bill's getting paid and it's not by me. Because now you know me, Tim, I do not take girls on dates. You, you got to remember, when I first... Um, I guess this is kind of like my, my official entrance into the manosphere. But when I was into the manosphere from afar, one of the problems I had with a lot of these guys is I kept hearing all the same stories, right? How they got basically set up for a foodie call. You see what I'm saying? Where the girl has no interest in you, but takes you, you, know, takes you for a ride, right? Yep. The, the problem I had with this was this was the polar opposite. Everything that I've heard from all YouTube content creators in the manosphere was the polar opposite of my life. Right? So I said, wait a minute, what do you mean a foodie call? 
I was like, I've had gr- girls bring me food or ask me, hey, do you want something to eat? So, so imagine, if, like I said, one of the reasons why I wanted to start this channel and, and start doing my thing was that I wanted guys to see what it's like on the other side. Because all I hear, like I said, this is no knock against any of the guys. I, I love all the guys that are creators. This is no knock against, like, you know, Better Bachelor, Coach Greg Adams, uh, Strong Successful Male. There, there's lots of great channels out there, right? Yeah. But the basic tone was the same. Like, you know, just average guys, you know, hey, we got 10 a ride. I'm thinking to myself, I didn't. So, so, so you know, Tim, I've told guys stories on, on Nick's show, right, on Rakeda Law. And there's people that think I'm making all this shit up. The reason they think I'm making it up is because my stories are the polar opposite of the, the 80%, right? You know, the 80-20, the 80-20 rule is, is, is quickly becoming the 90-10 rule, right? Mm-hmm. So when I tell guys, you know what I mean? Look, dude, this is what, what it's like on the other side. And guys don't believe me. I said, look, I'm not lying. I'm not making it so, you know, Tim, you know me. I have receipts to everything I say, right? Yeah, I've seen the text messages. And you know something? I'm I'm in that same boat too. Look, I gave up on the fantasy that I could ever be happy just settling down with a girl with a high body count at a high school, <laughs> you know, white picket fence, three kids running around. I gave up on that fantasy a long time ago because this yep. is not Disney World that we're living in. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and here's the thing. When you when I would tell guys what was happening, right? And, and I, I talked about this very topic when uh, NBA Mad Black Atheist was on the show, right? And I said, what ends up happening is when you tell guys the truth, one of the things that really bothered me, and it, it really did get to me, was that I felt like, like I said, I felt like a disrespected Prometheus. How am I coming back with this knowledge and this wisdom, bringing it back to to to, to the eighty percent, and they're mad at me, right? Yeah, I'm like, hey man, you guys have all been lied to. I was lied to. You were lied to. We were all lied to. I was, te- I shit you not, man. I was telling this to guys way back when, years ago, and all I got from dudes was, "Fuck you, uh, you don't know anything about love. Uh, I can't stand you." So I'm thinking, like, you know what, dude? Okay, whatever, man, whatever. So, so what you're starting to see happen now is more and more guys are starting to figure it out, right? More and more guys are are taking that red pill, right? Yep. Or the black pill. There's some dudes that just went full on black pill, right? And, and I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, but whatever you are, don't be a blue pillar. E- even even a purple pillar, I can be like, I get it, right? I, I can understand. There are some people who want to live in the fantasy. They know it's a lie, but they said, I, I'm just sick and tired of always having to deal with this truth and honesty stuff. I wish I could just be ignorant. Yeah, and I, you know what though, and I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I truly believe that that guy has a very valid point, right? Because that old saying, right, "Ignorance is bliss," it's 100 percent accurate. Oh, absolutely, it is. Ask anybody you know, anybody on this earth, when were they at their happiest? Right? Everyone gives you the same answer, right? What, what's everyone's answer when someone says, "When were you at your happiest, Tim? When was it?" Childhood is your best time. And someone goes, okay, what makes childhood unique? Childhood has two things going for it that nothing else, no other period in your life will ever have. You have no responsibilities. No responsibility and none, zero, right? That's half of it. So what's the other half? And and women are icky. They got cooties. Yeah, you're right. But, but, but even, even, even when you were first started, like when you first pulled open your first uh, porno magazine, or even your first uh, Playboy, or you saw your first adult video, right? Actually, it was the uh, nude scene in Titanic. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Oh man, yeah. Uh, uh, what's her face? Uh, Kate Winslet. Yeah. And, and well, think about it though. At that time, most people, you know, depending on what age of our viewers are, at some point, everyone who's who's going to listen to this show was a was a kid, and when they were a kid, they believed things were a certain way. So you basically, as a kid, you just act and react. That's how you get through life, right? Action, reaction. There is no, like, real deep thought as a kid. I mean, if you don't believe me, as an adult, go try to talk to a kid, right? They can't relate to you because they're like, what the hell are you talking about? The frame of reference right? is completely different. It, it's completely gone. Like, like, and one of the things that, that makes kids 
uh, the most amazing creatures on earth is they are fascinating due to their ignorance, right? And one of the things I found fascinating while I was in, I was in college, I was in, uh, yeah, I took philosophy classes. Nick and I were in a lot of creative writing classes together. And one of the things I found fascinating was a child and an adult have the opposite vantage point. The child views the majestic as perfectly logical and sane and views reality as insane. So what does that mean? That means a child, the Easter Bunny, makes logical sense to a kid, right? The tooth fairy makes logical sense. I lost a tooth. I put it under my pillow. The tooth fairy flies in at night and puts a dollar under my pillow. That makes sense, right? I, I don't know. With the Canadian exchange rate, I, I usually ask for, a, for $2. Yeah, right? Uh, <laughs> well, 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 think about it. Bitch, Santa Claus makes logical sense. Give, give me a toonie. Well, well, think about it. Santa Claus makes sense. It doesn't matter what religion you are. The, the very premise of Santa Claus, culture to culture, makes logical sense, right? Very topical, given the time of the year. Look, man, I actually had this conversation earlier today. And I said, look, whatever you celebrate, celebrate that shit. Hanukkah, Christmas, uh, fucking Chinese New Year, I don't care. And, and, you know what, though? And, and my thing is this. If someone says Merry Christmas to you, you can just say Merry Christmas back. It's no big deal. If, if a person bumped into me and said Happy Hanukkah, I would just say Happy Hanukkah. Oh, yeah, you too. You too. No big deal. I, listen, I am not triggered by religious holidays or figures. I'm not. It doesn't matter. It means nothing to me. I'm definitely triggered by Happy Kwanzaa. That triggers me. <laughs> but but if, someone, if someone went ahead and said Happy Kwanzaa, yeah, yeah you no big deal. Whatever you want to ce celebrate it. Own it. But one of the things I've noticed is that a lack of confidence is how we got to where we are. That's where PC actually comes from. It, it's PC, political correctness, comes from insecurity. Right? If, if you could draw a picture of insecurity, it's someone looking at their toes while trying to talk to someone. Absolutely. And my thing is this, we get it, right? Now, now remember, a, a, a polite, oh, excuse me, or I'm sorry, just uh, it's very perfunctory, right? But the reason why it's important is that, you know, manners are important. <laughs> Je m'excuse for those who are in the different part of the country. Yeah, yeah right? But, but j j basically all you're doing is that you're acknowledging that you, you had an accidental uh, um, uh, exchange, right? You bumped into somebody, even, you know, you spill a drink. Body language can dictate that also. If, if I go to Turkey right now, right, if I'm in Istanbul and I bump into somebody and I accidentally spill a drink, even if they don't understand my language, I go, oh, I'm sorry. When, when I put my hands up, right, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Or I try to reach and, and, and try to, you know, use a napkin to, to wipe it off. The person understands, they are acknowledging the person is sorry for what they did. It was an accident, right? Yeah. Now it becomes, oh, it, it's racial, right? Yeah. It's a microaggression. It's a microaggression. I said, look, I do, listen, now I think the term is overused. However, that being said, if you want to understand microaggressions, quote unquote, the movie Get Out actually is very accurate. Because if you are a black dude and you have ever dated a white chick, you dealt with a lot of bullshit, trust me. Believe you me. The, the amount, like, like, Get Out is so accurate. It's almost too accurate. Because the, people are going to say shit to you. They're only saying that because you're black. You see what I'm saying? Yep. It's the overcompensation, right? It's the, uh, the pendulum swings. But, but, but now it goes back to what I said, right? Insecurity. You see what I'm saying? If the person just sat there just being cool, just look. If, okay, let's say you're, you're, you're a white guy, right? You're an older white guy. Your daughter's dating a black dude. If you don't make a big deal out of it, nothing matters anyway. You see what I'm saying? But once you try to overcompensate, that's where the problem starts happening, right? I'm glad you brought that up because I've always had a question that I've never, never been able to get a satisfactory answer on. How do you, how do you feel about the N-word? Here's my take. I think that the shit is played out. I think that it's... It is derogatory. Let's start there. It is derogatory. 
And if you don't believe it's derogatory, just go into Gary, Indiana, and start throwing out the N-word. The N-word, the original usage, was designed to be for ignorant people. It did not have a color connotation to it. You see what I'm saying? It, it evolved into having a color connotation to black people, but that was not the original uh, usage of the word. Now, that being said, black people fucked up due to their own insecurity by saying, I'm going to start using the word as a deflection tactic to, so that you can't hold power over me by using it, right? It's the same reason why women use the word bitch, right? I'm a boss bitch. But if a guy walks up and is like, you bitch, oh my God, that's so offensive. See, it's, the same, it's very similar, right? So that's why, okay, in-group preference, right? That's why if a bunch of black people are amongst each other using the word, they can get away with it. An outsider comes in, starts using it. But, but now, now, let's be fair. This is also a microcosm of a lot of, of uh, dynamics within the social construct, right? A man can walk around all day saying, you know what, Tim? Let me tell you about that fucking wife of mine, that ball and chain, right? Mm -hmm. What happens the moment someone else talks about his wife and says the exact same thing he just said? What happens? They, don't, they jump down his throat. Why? Isn't it true? Why, why is it a big deal? It's, it's almost like these governors who were shutting the states down, right? It's like, no, no, no. I'm allowed to talk shit about women, but you're not allowed to. Correct. And that's how dudes treat their, their uh, wives, right? The, I, there's guys that will say all kinds of things about their wives, but let you say it. Now it's a problem. It's an unwritten rule, right? Now, I do believe that you do need certain unwritten rules because if you don't have unwritten rules, ironically enough, your society actually gets worse, right? And it, you and I both know there's all kinds of unwritten rules, right? Social contracts that don't ever get outwardly expressed, they're just there. Right, and for our UK, sh shout out to our UK fellas. Here's some trivia: uh, most of their constitution is not in one document; it's like spread across documents. And s some parts of the UK constitution are just written, unwritten conventions. Yep, there's a little bit of trivia for you. Well, well you know, I'm glad you brought that up because that actually segues into uh, a point that is very important, which is. The, the destruction of the social contract, once again, insecurity, has helped destroy relationships between all people, black, white, men, women, right? Well, now you have these apps that you have to get consent on before uh, you do anything. And then she can, she can always uh, uh, rescind consent, right? Does, does that just fundamentally misunderstand the nature of a hookup when you have an app that says... Oh, get me. Be sure to get her consent first. You know, sign this box before you go into that box. Yeah, right? Like, like, think about uh, Jordan, Dr. Jordan Peterson, a Canadian, no less. He talked about how insane, he talked about how insane it is to ask for consent at every step, right? Because it's, it, it's unnatural. It, it, because remember, the social contract dictates that our body language and our word, like just how we are. It's like a dance, right? We're dancing together, and whenever if something is overtly, you know, off, right? We, we step on each, you know, on, on a toe. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Keep going. We're cool. We're got, we're back dancing, right? And this is accepted. Now, what has happened is, no, no, no. I'm gonna need your consent every step of the way. Is it okay for me to rub your shoulder? Yes. Oh, stop, 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 stop. I didn't say you could touch my arm though, just my shoulder. Well, if you start asking for consent every single step of the way. It's so disjointed that the, as the guy, you're like, this, what's the point of this, right? You, I, I bet you, I'm willing to bet if they did a social experiment on this, right? I'm willing to bet very few guys can get their dick hard if they ask for consent for every single step of the way. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that. And there probably already is research on that. Just substitute consent for condom. <laughs> right? Right. Oh, babe. No, man, I'm clean. Look, when, when these females tell you that they're clean, or, or, or better yet, they're on the pill, don't believe them. Oh, for sure. I, I learned that lesson a long time ago. But just, just imagine, the, uh, especially if you don't have one handy, what a mood killer it is. It is. It is yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. Or, or, or look, what, what if you're down to your last one? 
and the fucker tears, right? Yeah. Oh, shit. Maybe uh, I can tie it off. Maybe maybe I can make a knot at the nope. end here and just uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, you got to you got to go ahead and ask for uh you have to go in and check, you know, like hey, what's the last time you you know, you got any new new gloves? You know, you got new cleaning gloves, right? For the bathroom. Let's just cut off the thumb, right? Let's cut the thumb out and then tape it. Nothing's going to work, bro. Good enough. Good enough. Let's go. Good enough. No, nothing's going to work, bro. Nothing. There's there's some advice for all you guys out there. Yeah, right? Well, it's it's almost that you have you have to be uh, you have to be carrying rubbers nowadays because you can't fucking trust anyone. None, nobody, nobody. And, and, and here's the thing that's sad is that uh, you know we've talked about this, which is birth control should have always been given to men, always. It, it would have solved you. You could have literally solved a hundred different problems if all you had to do was give birth control to men. Let, let me give you an example. Annual physical, right? Your, your checkup. You go to the doctor. All right, doc, put put in the uh, the IED, right? Uh, imagine uh, the they, they IED, put something in your arm. The improvised explosive you, device. <laughs> IUD. IUD. <laughs> I, I'm like I, IED. I'm, 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 I know all my army guys are, are jumping down my throat right now. The IUD, right? I, I, I need this IUD in my arm though. But but think about it. Imagine guys going in for their annual physical and, and they just, yep, yep, we got to go ahead, put it back in, boop, there it is, everything's good. Could you imagine if a guy becomes fucking sterilized until he decides he wants to have kids? Could you imagine? It would. T- I can tell you why this has not been invented already. It takes all the power away from the women. All, all power. No, no more uh, phantom pregnancies, right? Oh, they would try anyways. They'd try. They'd say, oh, maybe maybe it wasn't working that time. Yep. It's only 99% accurate, right? And you know what, though? And, and everyone, and you know what's crazy is that women admit this. If you ask, like, like I said, now remember, though, it has to be a woman who's past the wall. So, so you can't ask a young woman because they're all corrupted by feminism. So ask, a, ask a, a, an older woman, and they'll say, they go, yeah, birth control should have been given to men. Because dudes won't forget the pill, will they? Ever. Could you imagine? Uh, beep, 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 beep. Oh shit! The pill boop pops it in. He's like, "I have no babies," and a guy can go out there and just fuck like Genghis Khan, just busting nuts after nut after nut. Right? I'm saying every dude would work for planners, man. That's how many nuts would get fucking busted. Every dude, because because at the end of the day, that's all guys really want is to fuck. They don't really want relations. This, this is, this is a, something for all the, the, the guys out there. And uh, I think, I can't remember, I talked to someone in, uh, in the Discord chat. And because, you know, he said, that, you know, I, I want a family, blah, blah, blah. I said, let me ask you something. I want you to really, really think about this. Do you really want it? Or is that just what you've been conditioned to believe you want? Right? Because let's, let's think about this for a second. Unless you work from home, you go out to work every day, right? You have to go out there in the world. You have to commute. You have to work at least eight hours. You commute. You have to get food maybe when you're on your way back, whatever, right? The amount of time you spend away from the house is about 10 hours a day, right? Depending on how long your commute is. If, if you remember, if you had to wake up, get, get dressed, go, you know, go, go hop in a car, drive to work, go through traffic, perhaps, depending on where you live, And, you know, you go to a place of employment. That means, along with your eight hours of work, along with your lunch break, blah, 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 you may spend somewhere anywhere between uh, nine to 12 hours away from home, right? Well, if you you add up the amount of time that you spend sleeping, which, you know, depending on what, what kind of guy you are, let's say somewhere between four to eight hours of sleep per day, right? Okay, you have to eat. How much time do you spend with your fucking this this family that you claim you want so badly, right? I don't know. There's still something to be said about uh, going out camping in the weekend in the Rocky Mountains. You can do that with your bros. It's not the same though. I, I know. I, I get it. Look, here's the thing. I get it. But but here's the thing though. The small caveats that you get with your kids. That's really what guys are really saying. They're saying they're willing to sacrifice so much. For the small caveats, right? Surprise, surprise. It's the exact opposite of women. 
I was just about to say that. It is the polar opposite, right? Where every little inconvenience is like the universe has conspired to wrong her in some way. Yep, there's, there's no sacrifice of any kind, right? And don't, don't even get me started about how they use the kids as pawns, right? Oh, the, the best pawn in the world is the, the child when you combine them with the corrupt family court. Oh, go back, go back to that Sophie Long case we talked about in episode. Oh, one. was that not the worst shit ever? I've lost. I almost lost faith in all of humanity in that in that five minutes. And you know what? There was not one. There was not one penis in that entire process that was there to right the ship. The female judge, the mother. We we got to yeah. invent. A, we got to invent a new type of simp for you know men who will go after young girls. Because you know what. Calling them a pedophile just isn't enough anymore. What is the law? I, I, remember, I actually took a screen grab of it. It was a few months back. It, it was before the elections. Something passed in California that you can have oh, uh, right, sexual right. relations or I think it's like oral and anal. So it was some weird shit as long as they uh, are, are something like they're under a certain age and they consent, then it's okay. As long as the age gap is like, was it like uh, un- within 10 years, right? Yeah. Now, there was some misunderstanding about that bill, and Nick cleared it up a little bit as a sidebar in one of his main videos. But uh, that law actually closed a loophole that existed uh, because of another messed up law that California passed. Surprise, surprise. But uh, they were going to get struck down by the court because they were treating people unequally. So they had to pass this law in order to standardize because I believe the law only re- uh, applied to same sex relationships. Ah, and it removed yeah. a penalty that criminalized uh, the act in same-sex relationships, but it was not a criminal act if it was opposite-sex relationship. So of they were course. they were going to get smacked down by the court on that one. So they had to they had to. But in you know instead of uh, instead of passing two laws saying okay both are wrong, no they just passed the one and said oh well, let's open it up. So they literally open it up. Open it up. We need a new term, though. We, 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 we need a new slur against pedophiles because just calling them a pedophile isn't enough anymore. Well, and, and you know what, though? And that term has lots of meanings now, right? Because calling someone a pedo could just mean a creep by modern standards, right? It just means, oh, you, you look a little, a little shady. Like, you, you wear trench coats. Or, or in the Cody Wilson case... I mean, yeah, technically the term is correct, but I hardly think that he's going out uh, looking for underage girls. Compare that to Ryan Haywood. I mean, you can use the same name for both of them, but are they the same person? No. Yeah, all these people are pieces of shit. Yeah, yeah, that guy. Um, first of all, the <laughs> Rooster Teeth guy. Uh, you know, this needs to get talked about. All this pegging shit and all this, right? This whole issue with these guys out here, you know, putting butt plugs on walls and doing it for someone on the internet. Don't be that fucking guy, man. You see what I'm saying? Don't and, be that guy. And we talked about confidence issues. Um, I've I've actually been a pretty big fan of Rooster Teeth uh, many years ago when Red uh, their Red vs. Blue Machinima came out. Because, uh, you know, I like Halo. I like the Halo universe. And when that came out, I was like, oh, this is cool. Um, so I've watched a lot of their content and Ryan Haywood as a personality strikes me as someone who goes home and gets whipped by his wife. Um, his wife is a, uh, vet, a veterinarian. And he is this, uh, performing artist on a YouTube channel, right? So every single time they get into an argument, who's bringing up, well, why don't you go out and get a real job? Yeah, true. Right, because they do that. They do that shit. If they make more money than you, they will, they will turn that shit on you so fast. Well, do you know what? Here's what I think guys need to start doing. If you are in a position of weakness and your woman ever says something like, you know, why don't you go get a real job, blah, blah, blah. She tries to emasculate you, right? You can just go ahead and fucking shit test her. You know, my, I think my real job is going to be divorce rate since you make so much more money, right? Then I'll be the man, won't I? And watch how she flips. <laughs> yeah. Right? Now you're paying because me the... alimony. Oh, yeah, now you're paying me. Oh, wait, 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 oh, wait, 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 wait. Settle down, settle down, right? But I because... know from watching Ryan's videos that he is not a confident person. Um, his wife was his high school sweetheart. Drex, how, how bad, 
How bad of a how bad is it to marry your high school sweetheart? Never. Don't do it. Don't ever do it. Don't ever do it ever. And I want to be a family man. I and even I know. Don't ever marry your high school sweetheart because you think she's the best and you've met one person, right? You've met one woman and you think that she's the best that you've ever met. You've got one itis and you think that's good. And I, I will say this though. Um, when, when it comes to the, the whole, the issue of one itis, these guys believe that they have women that are worth a damn. Um, I, I told you, you know, we, we talked about this uh, before we got on the show today, which is, one of the things I'm going to do that I haven't seen anyone do on YouTube yet. I haven't seen anyone on any, any platform do what I'm going to do, which is I'm going to bring on the women who are out here cheating directly. So you are going to hear directly from them. Right. And do you, do you know how many of these women had high school, you know, they were the high school sweetheart or college sweetheart or, you know, just out of college. Right. Or the boyfriend is this beta male simp going to um, all the feminist marches Saying, you know, I am in a polyamorous relationship. I don't gatekeep my girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's offensive and patriarchal to ask. Where... Now, here's what I would say. I don't know about the, the next guy, because like I said, I don't believe uh, any, any modern woman is worth all the trouble to be out here doing the whole, you know, where were you at? What were you doing? Blah, 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 right? My thing is this. I was the polar opposite. I gave them complete freedom to do what they wanted. Because here's what I learned a long time ago about women. And, and men. Men or women. If they want to cheat, they're going to cheat no matter what anyway, right? So why stop them? Why sit here and be like this? Who, who are you talking to? With all this make guarding? You don't need to make guard. If she belongs to the streets, let her belong to the fucking streets, right? And then be honest with yourself. Do you want to be with someone who belongs to the streets? Some, some people say yes. Yeah, some, some guys say yes. You know what? All the more power to you because you're going your own way because you said, I recognize what my situation is and I am fully committed to it. But, but you remember what I always said? My issue is hypocrisy. Just don't come crying to me when your, your, your wife or girlfriend is getting cream pied by a bunch of dudes. And she comes home and doesn't want to even be around you. Don't come to me saying, oh, I, I feel this way. Bro, that's on you. Remember, remember you said you didn't want to check her, right? Look at, look at, look at the, the, the ultimate simp, Prince Harry, right? Yeah. So he's cut off from his friends, lost his gun collection, lost his title. And it's only a matter of time before Megan is going to be out. Remember, she, they're, in, they're in Megan's neck of the woods now, right? Not Harry's. So how long do you think before she starts, like, you know, having lunches with other guys, right? Girls night out. Oh, Harry, I want you to meet this friend of mine from high school. Yep. It's coming. It's coming. And you know what? She's got the ultimate power grab on him, too, because of that whole Epstein shit. You you don't think for one second, if she felt slighted the least, she'd run straight to the press. National Enquirer. Here's, you know what? Harry disappeared for three days. Well, uh, Epstein was on his island. Okay. Like, I'll give you an example. Uh, Tim, I've told you about all the receipts I have. You know, I got text messages, all kinds of shit, right? I don't use it against people. You see what I'm saying? Like, it, it, so, so if I have a falling out with a female, right? She knows. I mean, I got pictures, everything. That doesn't mean I'm going to use it. That's being responsible with the power I have, right? Because I'm not going to blackmail people. You see what I'm saying? And there's a lot of men who are not responsible with the power they have. Look, your role as a man, you're supposed to have the power in balance. And it is your duty to never misuse that power. Absolutely. Well, well I mean, for example, I had a girl ask me one about, you know, what, what is a relationship like with me? And I let her know, it's a benevolent dictatorship, right? There's no equality. I, deter- I make the final call on everything. Now, does she get input? Absolutely. Do I take her input? Absolutely. But who has final say? I do. She falls in line. It, think about it. It's no different than a kid, right? Listen, my daughter has the, the full, you know, the door is always open for her to come and ask me or suggest something to me. 
and beg for something, right? Now, I don't stop her from doing that, right? But who has final say on whether or not she gets what she wants? I do. She asked me for the the uh, the new air, uh, air what are they call AirPods, yeah, uh, the new AirPods, right? Now, Tim, let me ask something. If you had a ten year old daughter who who is known to be forgetful, because all kids, would you give them something that is the size of a thumbtack that's easy to lose that costs two hundred and fifty dollars? Would you do that? No, no, I would not. Forget some. Oh shit! Uh, 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 uh. Or Gone. loses one of them. Or loses one, right? $250 down the drain. Now, if I'm going to buy those, I'm going to buy it for someone who is responsible, an adult. Mom, dad, oh, yeah, that'd be a good Christmas gift, right? She's always using speakerphones, so let me buy her these AirPods. Now she has, hey, I, uh, one of the gifts I'm buying for my parents is the, uh, a 4K Fire Stick. Uh, my dad has become a believer now because, you know, he's, you know they, were, they were still using direct TV, right? How long did we go through trying to set up this surface? <laughs> right? <laughs> what was that, two hours trying to get this goddamn computer set up? And you're going to buy him a fire stick? And, and so, so, don't get me wrong. So, so here's the thing. I, okay, as long as you set up everything, they, they do figure it out relatively easily, right? Like, same, same with, uh, you know, because like when, when my dad came to town a couple of weeks ago, I was telling him, because so he, had, he had already used the fire stick once before, the last time he was here this past summer, right? And he was kind of like, okay, I'm going to have to tell your mom about this. And of course, he told her, and of course, you know, because she's mom, she doesn't want to listen. No, 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 it doesn't have X, Y, Z. This has all my channels. Of course, this, this is female logic 101. It doesn't matter what level of education they acquire. I think my mom has a master's degree. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how, what, what she accomplished in life. It's irrelevant. Her brain thinks exactly the fucking same. As a child, they do not evolve in any way, shape, or form. So, so think about this, Tim. My dad is sitting down there in, you know, in, in Vegas with my mom, right? Retired. He comes, sees the fire stick, immediately recognizes that it is a superior product, right? And he goes, okay, I should go back and tell her because why pay X amount of money every month when we only watch six, six channels, right? That's, that's male logic. Why am I paying DirecTV $160 a month for six? I only watch six channels. So then you show me, you go, look, just get the channels a la carte. Oh, you like watching golf? Buy the golf channel. A yearly subscription. You like X, Y, and Z? We have Hulu. You have Netflix. You just buy it a la carte and that, that's it. It's significantly less than paying all that money per year for, uh, or per month for DirecTV, right? But mom... But I need my channels. She doesn't actually watch 600 channels. She only watches six. And, and watch in quotation marks, too. Like Watch. It, yeah. It's on in the background, right? So, so what, you, what you're really getting at is she watches a couple of shows on those six channels, right? So when, when, when you ask people, do you actually understand what you're saying? A lot of people really don't. And that's why when, when you know, to, to go back, and loop back around to the guy who, you know, talked about having wanting kids. I was like, do you really though? Because if you really do, if you are hell bent on having kids, you cannot have children with women. You cannot do it. We're, uh, we're just growing them in test tubes at this point. And I mean, really, what's the goddamn difference? Now we have designer babies, right? The celebrities have the designer babies. Yep. So how is that any different than just like, Rather than um, going through the McDonald's play pit looking for a very specific ball, why don't you just go make the ball yourself? Yep. Well, and don't forget this. Men, as a, as a collective, we aren't known to be shoppers. We're known to be buyers, right? We, we analyze what we want to buy, and then we go get it, right? You know how many times I come back from the grocery store and I'm like, ah, I forgot something. Oh, well, I'll do without you know, what woe is me for forgetting. Next time I won't forget. Next time I won't forget, man. I'll be on it next time. And, and that's how it works. But you, have you ever yeah, you get up to the you get up to the checkout counter, right? And it's always it's always this like it's always a forty year old mom. She's got like three hundred dollars worth of groceries up on the counter and she's like, Oh, I forgot something. 
runs away from the counter while the poor cashier is trying to like, hey, can you pay for this? Of course. Of so, course. It's always this 40 year old mom that does that too. Or she goes out because you you know, I think was it you that sent me the article? Uh, a few people sent me an article about um it's being pushed in mainstream media now, right? To be a cook, right? Like, like, like my, my, my wife's boyfriend. You know what I'm talking about, right? Oh, there's like a dozen of them. There's two from The Guardian. There's a couple from Huffington Post. Um, I think maybe CNN had like a how cuckoldry may be healthy for a relationship. Or New York Times. I, I forget which one. But as, as if these media companies need another excuse to be less than, to be complete failures. And that is actually a good segue into this new segment that I want to bring in at the end of every episode. Let's get to BBC News. And what does it stand for? Well, use your imagination, you dirty, dirty, dirty mind. That's right. So this is a segment I want to run every week where I bring in news articles that people have sent us. And the one that I really wanted to talk about is an article from Gizmodo talking about how 2020 has been a one god-awful year, but not for OnlyFans. And I'm going to read, Drex, I'm going to read this first paragraph to you. I'm not even going to look at any of the author info. Just tell me what you think this guy is like when I read this first paragraph. Oh, God, here we go. Well, I realize that the world won't magically reset when the clock strikes midnight on New Year's Eve. I'm still counting down the days until this cursed year is over. I mean, the universe has to be running out of ammo to hit us with, right? So far, 2020 has seen an ongoing global pandemic, the spread of murder hornets, a fire tornado, widespread political and social unrest, and the president and his supporters calling to bring back public executions. That, that's the opening paragraph? That's the opening paragraph. Wow, this guy's a power bottom. Yeah. All right, second paragraph. But for at least one company, all those months of people stuck in quarantine in their homes, has made 2020 the most successful year on record. OnlyFans, a subscription-based social media platform where creators charge fans to access their content. Is that an accurate description of OnlyFans to you? Fuck no. Why don't they just call it prostitution, man? Yeah, only prostitutes. Yeah, basically it's only simps. Here's the thing. Uh, when, when we look at things like OnlyFans, OnlyFans can only exist because there are guys out there who, who want to give the women money, right? It, it's the same thing about I have, uh, you know, with, with sex tourism, right? Sex tourism within, if there's no clientele or there's no product, right? Either side. So, so you know, with, with you know, for those of the guys out there in Asia, uh, you know, uh, Phuket, uh, Patia, you know, there's Walking Street out there. Those guys know none of that prostitution shit would be going on if there was no buyer. There has to be a client, right? So OnlyFans has to have simps. I mean, if women just went on on video all day exposing themselves, and there was, and every guy were were me, they would have no money, right? Because I'm not subscribed to OnlyFans, never have, never will. And it's like, like, I don't get what people get out of that other than like, you know, we, you and I've talked about this. I, I truly believe it's the validation, right? Like, 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 you know, like, oh, I feel connected because I talked to this webcam model. What? They need to make a, a medication to deal with delusion of that magnitude. They need to. They really do. Because I, I think they're, uh, I just think those guys are hopeless personally. The the women are hopeless. In, in the, so the women are more delusional. And, you know, the delusion on the other guy's side is hopeless. Because, let's face it, a lot of these OnlyFans thoughts don't save any of their money, right? So so they truly believe it's good, like, you know, the, 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 the simp pool is going to go on forever. I, I, look, how many strippers do you think are, are really struggling right now? B. Simone, that ratchet broad who said that, you know, she, she's too good for a 9 to 5 man. Yeah, she started in OnlyFans. A lot of these celebrities, right? Starting OnlyFans. Like, because back in the day, remember they used to go to porn. Remember that, that was, that's how you knew your career was over? If you're a female who went to porn, that means your, your star had, had, had burned, burned out. Now, 
you can parlay still into OnlyFans and, and Simps can donate to see their favorite, um, you know, childhood star or whatever get ran through. Do you know what percentage OnlyFans takes from those Simps? Oh, no. What, what do they take? According to the article, they take 20%. Now, what are they taking from Nick on Super Chats? Do you, do you remember what they take from Nick on Super Chats? I think it's 30%? Yeah. That's insane. Wait, so let me get this straight. Now, you say they take from the Sims, but it, wait, wait, I think it's got to be the reverse, right? It's got to be from the, the content creator. Yeah, yeah right? it's from the, uh, the creators, what the creators earn. But let's face it, it's the Sims money. Correct. Yeah, Sims money goes to a chick busting it open. And then OnlyFans takes 20%. Don't you find that a little weird that OnlyFans takes less than YouTube? No, I don't find it weird at all. I actually, I find it very reasonable. No, I'm saying from, from the YouTube perspective. Well, we know that we know that YouTube won't stand up for men. OnlyFans is the only one out there standing up for men. It's like, it's bad enough these poor simps are giving their money. The least I can do is take 20%. But yeah, that's, uh, that's the only article I got this week from a fan. Guys, uh, please send articles in uh there's any number of ways to uh contact us you can also email advice at migtown.show uh that's where i take in advice questions we got four this week four emails asking for advice oh let's go let's do it but also uh for those who are subscribed at the premium tier either at sub uh, subscribe star or patreon and if your advice question has just a little bit too much personal info you don't want it read on the show you can submit it that way, and we I'll have Drex film a video answering your question one-on-one. -on -one. We'll do it for about a minute, all right? So don't give me your whole life story. We got to get through this in about a minute. Because there's a lot of people out there, they have some really fucked up situations, and they're not really comfortable airing it out in public. And I get mm -hmm. that. You and I get that. But these guys still need our help, and we can help them. Absolutely. I, well, you know, one of the, that's actually one of the first things that I noticed is uh, when Nick first got me on Discord, right? I get on Discord, I'm like, I don't know what the hell Discord is, right? So I get on there, and guys were coming to me like, yo, man, this is the shit I'm dealing with. I'm like, really? And now here you are, running a successful podcast. The fans loved it. They want to see more. Guys, um, I know we've been ragging on OnlyFans so hard, and then I turn around and shill our Patreon. It's not the same. It's not the same. All right. These are people who've asked me, how can I support the show? Because I want to support the show. We give you this podcast for free. You don't need to pay to get this di a weekly dose of red pilling and black pilling. In return, in thank you, because the fans are what make us great. So to thank you for your support, for supporting the show financially, we're willing to do the ex go the extra mile. And these one-on-one -on -one advice questions is just one of the ways, one of the benefits you get from the $10 tier. You also get access to this Discord, this live recording right now. You can listen to us record the show live and listen to Drexel try to fiddle with a tablet for two hours. Oh, man. It, it, it was... <laughs> was that not the biggest fucking dumpster fire ever? All right, let's get to these advice questions there. I've been teasing them long enough. The first one comes to us. Uh, a... A long-time viewer of you on Nick's show. Uh, 31, living in Ireland, is a weightlifter, was at a shit job until 2019. And then he moved to a government, a secured government job just in time for the pandemic. There's the one group of people who did not suffer through this pandemic. No, you got damn right they did. Single for six years, Drexel. But he's going to go buy his own place. Now, number, number one, and I know we've gone over this, but I think he needs to hear it again. Number one question, I want to be a father. And I noticed that all the girls my own age are either fat single moms with one to three kids or very heavy depressed drinkers who are also fat. <laughs> Is single parent adoption a good idea or should I aim for a girl in her early 20s? Now, I have some advice, but I know he's really wanting your advice, so take it away. Here's what I'll say. And this, this guy's in the UK, if I recall, right? Yeah, Ireland. Yeah, Ireland. Yeah. Oh, oh, God. The, the, most the laws cut. are fucked. I was about to They're cut. Bro. Move to Texas. Be a single father, bro. Trust me. Do not 
go do not do it the, the normal way with a woman like if you want to be a uh, whether it be you know you adopt or whatever like whatever you do trust me trust me on this do not have a child with a woman with the laws the way they are trust me don't do it remember the laws are bad and the agencies can be bad but when it comes to getting your kid the Ronaldo way. I think you you just need money, right? Yep. Just pay for the test tube. To pay for the test tube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the, here's the thing. I did foster care for years, right? I was a, a respite foster care provider, right? They don't really go over you with a fine tooth comb. You know, they, they do a security check on you, blah, blah, blah. But they give you the kids pretty easily in foster care. Okay, I didn't know that. I always assumed that they, they would look at a single man and be like, all right, are you just going to, like, sell this kid to some traffickers or something? Yeah, which, which is really bizarre because it's women who abuse the kids more. Yeah. Well, I mean, the system's rigged against us, right? Oh, of course. Absolutely. It's more rigged than the U.S. election. Right? Those, those, those mysterious ballots, right? Yeah. So if a guy says, I'm thinking about, you know, uh, I want to have a kid, don't do it. With, with these laws... Unless uh, the only time a man should be have a kid in, under the modern gynocentric fucking war zone we live in is that he should do it when he has 100% custody, 100% legal rights, and she has no ability. Whoever the, 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 the test tube mom is, right? Yeah. Do not do in vitro or um, with surrogate mothers. Yeah, absolutely. Do not do it. Yeah, uh, You do not have 100% custody of that. Even if she signs a paper that says, I give up everything, she'll come back 10 years, 20 years later and say, well, I was under duress or I yep. was poor and I was pressured into it, right? Yep. And get that contract annulled. Okay, number two, part two of that question. If right. single adoption is not the viable option, what should I look for in a woman that I can at least have some kid to carry on my family name? All right, I get where he's coming from on this. Right, Native Americans have a very, very storied history with their clan names, right? Mm -hmm. So I understand where that comes from. But do not kid yourself. The last thing any of your kids want to do is carry your name. Mm -hmm. So once you get past that initial reaction, what are you looking for in a woman that you can at least tolerate? Right, And he lists young, older, smart, stupid, crazy, not crazy. Well, we already talked about the, the, the magical triangle, right? The smart, sane, sexy. Yep. If you're looking for a mother, it's the sexy that you can afford to give up. Well, you know, I'm glad you brought that up. Let, let's be honest here. Contrary to popular belief, men have no problem sacrificing looks if the other things are intact, right? Because let's be honest. If your wife is a strong six and she puts on lingerie, what does she become? <laughs> ten in your mind, if that's all you got. If, if in your mind, she, she's your ten. She's not a ten. She's your ten. Yep. That's all that matters. It, I, I promise you. Look, I've had situations where, um, you know, there, there's women that I know that I, I'm with. And like, like I said, we're, we're, we're cool. Everything is good, right? And there's going to be people who go, but Drex, she's not like drop dead gorgeous. So, so, Tim, knowing what you know about me, why would I be with a woman who's not drop dead gorgeous? She's had to put the effort in, right? Yep. That 9 out of 10 blonde with the, like, triple Ds never had to put a moment of effort in in her life. Never. She coasted through life. Just, just look at my tits. Getting ran through. Getting ran through. Yep, look, look, look at me. All right, hot. I can't cook. I can't clean. I'm not funny. I have no sense of humor. I don't have any real hobbies other than nagging you. So that's what you get when you when you deal with a chick like that. So trust me, for the guys out there, the the best thing a guy can ever hope for this is this is literally the ideal. A man gets a strong eight, and the reason that she's so great is because she grew up in a place where she wasn't considered hot. So she has the ugly duckling syndrome, right? Because remember, there, there are some girls out there who are drop dead gorgeous, right? They they don't know they're drop dead gorgeous, right? I always feel like that's a myth, like Swedish twins. No, no, no. It, it does happen. Like, I'll give you a prime example. Uh, Czech Republic. Oh, you can, okay. You, I know where you're you, going with this. You, right know, you know what I'm talking about, right? So, yeah. so it, the scale is, for, for those of you who know, the scale is very different with Czech women, right? 
So a Czech woman to a to a guy like uh, uh, myself who comes from America, a six for a Czech woman is a nine or ten to an American. But but the thing is, is that that's the only way that you can get a very 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 attractive woman who's not going to be an entitled princess and batshit crazy. She had to like grown up on a farm, right? So she knows hard work. She just happened to be attractive. But she grew up, you know, in 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 the outskirts of you know well well outside of Prague, which is the major city, right? So so she grows up in some random little town, some village, and yeah, she's hot, but she's just like, oh, you know, I just I'm a humble woman. I like to you know take care of my man and you know do things like my mom did and my grandma did before her. But what's the problem though, Tim? What's the problem that all men have to face when they deal with a woman like this? What's the fear? Either she's going to stay what she is, which is unlikely, or what's going to happen is you're going to get the Aisha Curry syndrome. You're going to wife her up and that she's going to have kids for you. Beautiful kids. She's going to be a great wife to you. But at some point, the allure of thought culture is going to get in there, right? They call that the Jezebel spirit, right? Lila, the Jezebel spirit. Once that infects her, in, in, in the Western society, it will infect her. It's already infecting the East. Feminism has gone everywhere. There's no way that feminism has not touched. It ruins everything. That's where I have a problem. So, so to this guy who sent in that, that uh, question, understand what the risk is. I get it. You want your family name. You want to live on, blah, blah, blah. I get it. Trust me, I do. I really do. Make sure that you are absolutely willing to take that step. I would say that the guys who ran up Omaha Beach had an easier time than wrestling with fatherhood. Absolutely. And that's no disrespect to the veterans. My family has a very proud military history, right? Uh, my, my people, the Native Americans, were the code talkers. I talked about this before. Yep. Mad respect for these guys. But the pressure you are under to perform, and you don't get do-overs with kids. You don't. Right. If you storm that beach, you step on a landmine and lose your leg, all right, they put a prosthetic on, you get a bit of a do-over. I think I'm glossing over it just a little bit, but you know, you get what I'm saying, right? You don't get do-overs with kids. Nothing. So I, like, like in, in one of the ways to know if you have a quality woman, for you guys out there, just travel abroad with her. Travel with her. Oh, you mean hey. like that Canadian that brought his girlfriend to Afghanistan? Oh! <laughs> yeah, if you really want to know what someone's like, uh, get captured by the Taliban and held by in captivity for two years. Right? Um, all right, next email. Uh, a 17-year-old high school senior who was adopted from Guatemala into an all-white family. Never had a huge group of uh, friends, kept to himself. Uh, when he was younger, he was desperate to find answers about who he was and how he fit in the world around you. In particular, why his birth mother abandoned him. This constant search has cursed me with depression, curious mind. It blessed him with perspective, but... I actually, I have an answer for this one. The answer lies in the movie uh, Steve Jobs, right? Yeah, yeah, it's Steve, it's Steve Jobs. Because, yeah, Steve Jobs is the one Michael Fassbender. Here's why that's so important. In the movie, because, you know, Steve Jobs was adopted, right? And Steve Jobs is, he is, I think he's like half Albanian. His, his dad is like Albanian or something, right? And his mom is just a white chick, right? Some basic white chick. This is why this is so important. There's a scene in the movie. I want to say it's, it's getting closer toward the end, right? And it deals with Steve Jobs' view. You, you ever wonder why Steve Jobs wasn't really, he didn't deal with that kind of like insecurity? With, with his, his uh, he, he knew, he's well aware of his status. He knows who his parents are, right? So why didn't Steve Jobs deal with some of the things that this, this, uh, this kid, this 17-year-old that's dealing with? Here's why. He talks to Scully, who was the guy, uh, who, was the guy who was uh, heading Pepsi at that point, and they came over to Apple. They're talking, and he said, the perspective is one of like this. He's talking to Steve. He says, you could either view it as like I was thrown away, right? I was neglected, right? Or I was selected. You see what I'm saying? 
so you can either you can view your your status as a, as a uh, as an orphan as a, as a person who was adopted. You can view it as someone didn't want me, right? Or you can view it as I was chosen, right? He said he he, he says he goes he's thinking about it. everyone else when they have a kid they just have a kid and then whatever happens with that kid is what they get, right? You, you know, you, you give birth to a kid, the kid turns out to be a piece of shit. You're like, well, I did everything I could, right? But with Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs was selected. So Jobs is the name of his, his adopted father. A lot of people don't understand that, right? So do you know where Steve Jobs got a lot of his personal identity from? It's from his, um, it's from his adopted father. So Steve, Steve Jobs' adoptive father was in California, and I believe he was a, I want to say he was an engineer, if I recall, right? He's like a mechanic kind of engineer guy, right? He introduced Steve to all of that shit, right? So he, he literally treated Steve Jobs as, as his biological son, right? So because of that, Steve Jobs always views him as, this is my, he says, he goes, this is my real father. Uh, just like... Uh, Steve Jobs' day was made by his adopted father. We're going to make this kid's day. He wanted to be on the show. Well, guess what? You're on the show. You're, on the You're show. here with Drexel. Give him a big shout out, my friend. He's about to graduate high school. Um, That's good shit, It gets man. better. It does. It really does. It really does. And, 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 and I will say this, though. I do believe this wholeheartedly. I believe that one of this kid's problems is that he was adopted by white people. I, I actually sympathize with this kid because at the end of the day, he said he's Guatemalan. Well, if you're if you're adopted, I'm assuming he has brown skin. You get adopted by white people, you're always gonna see, like there's gonna be that once again insecurity, right? Yeah. So so think about it. Look at that as a look. You got access to better schools, better everything. Don't feel guilty about that. Be like this. Yes, these are not my biological parents. And remember this. At some point you can find your biological parents and you can go like this. Get the story from them because remember, you don't know what could have been happening, right? There could have been a damn civil war. Any, any, they could have been, you know, you've heard about those those, those girls who, you know, they're the you know, grooming gang, all kinds of shit, right? There's all kinds of things happening, evil shit in the world that sometimes someone's like this, that my kid has a better chance of survival and thriving if I let them be with someone else. Because, you, you know, I got to be honest with you. That does not always mean that your parents, your biological parents love you any less. Right? All right. There's what, there's a, there's another email here. Uh, guys, right. we're going to send in content to us. Um, make sure they're safe for work links, please. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. Yeah, those who do send in, because I got a bunch of chat messages here. It's a little too much to go through now. Maybe we'll do it in a bonus episode when we have Ken Jennings in here and we'll uh, go through some of these text messages with, a you know, like an actual therapist. Um, So, on to the next email. Also, guys, keep your emails short, please. I have, like, a guy, I have the sequel to Fifty Shades of Grey right here. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, I'll try to... Uh, I, I quickly skimmed it before the show. I'll try to sum it up the best I can. Now, this is a guy who's uh, feeling ostracized from his family. Uh, 20-year-old conservative supported Donald Trump, but father and sisters are on the far left. Um, and, you know, and his, his dad's always going to try and conf confront him. Uh, you know, this whole... Calling him out. Challenging him, calling him out. I can't think of someone more beta than having to flex on your son. Yeah. Yeah. Why the well, hell do you... First of all, uh, there is no respect for this man. No. no. No respect for this man at all. Why would you ever flex on your son? This is what I don't... This is why I know that Donald Trump was the correct decision. Give me no other context. Just show me a video of the average Trump enemy talking to the average Trump supporter, and I know which side I want to be on. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you like his politics or not. I don't care if you like that he's brash or, yeah. oh, he said some mean things about women. I don't care. Look at how you're acting. 
Hmm. Well, here's the thing. When, when it comes to this, this goes back to what I touched on earlier, right? Which is most problems come from the insecurity within oneself, right? Yes. So whatever, whatever your issue is, like I've always told people, this, every problem and every solution is found in the mirror. You see what I'm saying? So if you're going through something and you have, like I said, in this case, you have family members who are acting some kind of way, right? That's okay. Just be who you are. Because now think about it. If you ever want to see what ends up happening, if you, if you aren't uh, stoic, if you don't stand firm, you become the guy who starts dressing the way other people dress, wearing what other people wear, speaking the way other people want you to speak, right? I was ostracized. I, I've told you on Nick's show, I was ostracized from the black community as a, as a, at a young age, right? Because I, I don't fit the mold, right? I, I don't fit the thuggo mode that they want because that's easily controlled. I'm sure, I'm sure there's going to be lots of similarities between natives in Canada and blacks in America. I've always said that. Native reserves are the ghettos of Canada. The only difference between a reserve is that you can't hop on a train and head to downtown uh, or uh, uptown Chicago and uh, grab a Starbucks. Of course. So you have all the negatives of the ghetto, but there's nowhere to escape. Yeah, I, I'm one of those dudes, man, where I call attention to these these messed up situations because I, I'm unfeathered by it, right? Like, it's, I'm the kind of dude where I'll say something and people will say, oh, Drex is making this up. Or so I go, then, then go go look it up, right? Go, go into these environments, right? You go into these environments, the shit's fucked up. You see what I'm saying? Go on to an Indian reserve and walk about three or four blocks from the casino and you will see what I'm talking about. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we got it here too. You know what I'm saying? Right, right here in Minnesota. Yeah. Minnesota, you'll say, oh, well, these Indians are all living good. Like they're, they're driving, uh, uh, you know, a fucking Land Rover. Yeah, that's the chief. That's the chief in the council. That's the six people out of maybe 1,200 or 2,000. Yep. They, they, all they see is the glitz and glamour, right? Yep. Most of them are in abject poverty. At what point do you need to get out of Dodge? I think this is one of those situations. Because Yang, that that father is the ultimate beta, right? Absolutely, you, he's flexing on you. you. You can't fix that. You ain't gonna fix that. Nope. Uh, and he says that you know his sisters rag on him. Um, you know uh, they 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 pick on his mother too, who's kind of sympathetic to him. Um, man. Oh, and apparently this beta male tried to guilt shame him out of leaving, getting out of Dodge. Of course he did. It's like you're trying to shatter the family. He he's telling you exactly the opposite of what it should be because of his insecurity. We go back to that insecurity over and over again. This man is the most insecure person in the world. So so here's what here's what you really have in the case. Of. What this is a case of is this. This beta cuck father is insecure that his son basically rejected his bullshit, right? His beta yeah. programming. He knows this. So basically the son, you, this is you, the, the, the caller, you're stronger than your father is what the problem is. And he knows it. He knows it. And he's jealous of it. And he's jealous. And every beta will always double down, triple down, quadruple down, right? Yep. So this is what's going on right now. It's not going to get better. If doubling down didn't work, then he's going to triple down. And if triple down doesn't work, he's going to quadruple down on you. Absolutely. Ass. So, so, so what ends up happening is all this guy has to do is just basically you have to double down and triple down and quadruple down and quintuple down on who you are. Yeah. Whether you're there or not. You see, it's like, like, it, that goes back to what you said, right? And, and if they try to shame you for leaving, be like, eh, it's better than listening to you guys. Good luck. Yeah. And do you. And, and so here's, what ends up happening is here's what's going to happen. Your sisters are going to probably wind up with a higher body count. Become rabid feminists. Marry a beta cuck who's going to remind them of their father, right? While you're doing your thing. Don't listen to these people, man. Listen, I deal with it every day. Every day. As, as a black guy, you, trust me. If you want to see some heat, Tim, imagine living in the black community. Almost everybody is a rabid fucking progressive Democrat, allegedly. So, 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 think about it. You go to a family, like, and that's why, you know, there's people that have to go, Oh, look, it's Uncle Ruckus. Listen, I ain't out here cooning for white folks. Fuck that. But what I will not do is endorse black fuckery and victimhood mentality, right? 
I'm not going to sit here and say that every this is the white man. It's white supremacy. No, it's not. It's because a lot of black people are fucking lazy and worthless. The vast majority. Oh, oh wait a second. I can't agree with that statement. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> Get Susaned. I'm, I'm sure it's similar in the native community, right? A, a bunch of people who don't want to do shit, who don't want to do shit and blame everybody for their problems. Get called an Uncle Tom. Get to Get called Uncle Tom. Yep, you're an Uncle Tom. You're this. It's shaming language, right? So what yep. ends up happening is, I promise you, let me be successful on these, these platforms and doing some other projects I want to work on, right? The more success you get, the more and more jealous they get. The more jealous they get, the harder they're going to shame you, right? But again, I'm going to go back. Don't do the success to spite them. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Never be happy. Do it for you. Do it and for if you. your sisters are getting ran through and making more money than you, so the fuck what? So be it. They're not happier than you. I guarantee you they're not happier than you. Nope. Go out there and be you for you. Don't do it to spite him. Because then you're letting him win. You're beta to the beta. If you're if you're doing it, if you're living your life out of spite. Yeah. It's well, well Tim, you've seen me on Nick's show. There's guys that try to say I'm X, Y, and Z. And I tell them, I go, look, nothing that what you guys say is going to make me change how I live my life, right? Always look for uh, a way out. Look, look for a way out. Yeah, the, these family members, man, don't, don't take that shit personally. Just they are what they are. They want to bring you down. That's all it is to it. And I bet you, you know what? Deep down, there's an Oedipus thing going on here. Your father does not like that your mother is showing you that care rather than shaming you, right? Because the mom is being nice to the son, right? Yep, yep, yep. The That's mother true. respects the son. She doesn't respect the husband. That's what this boils down to. Yeah, she doesn't need to flex on anyone because she's got a beta for a husband. Yep. She's already won. She's already won. And now she sees a son who's not a cuck. And she's like, oh my God. So he had, what he said, he has two sisters, right? The sisters harp on him, but he doesn't back down the way my, my husband backs down, right? Let that shit sink in. Your dad is yeah. a beta cuck, man. Uh, I, I like to think, we were talking about Jordan Peterson earlier, and ever since Jordan Peterson had his falling out with the world, there's always been that vacuum. I think we, we want to go out and make the world better, don't we? And we can do that. We have a platform, and we can do it. Absolutely. One more. One more email to go through. All right, here we go. Ah. Uh, now, I believe I know the cure to simps, this, uh, this young person writes. Oh, shit. Let's, let's hear it. And it may seem strange, but I believe kids should not know what sex is until they're 15, 16 years old. I don't know if that's going to try it. I don't think that's going to change anything, though. Yeah. You know what? Um, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't sex ed that taught me how to, how to fuck chicks. That was fucking DNA, man. Yep. You know, no one showed me how to jerk off for the first time. Kids just naturally get your Just figured it out. Yeah, well, think about it. You, okay, you didn't have a desire to stroke your dick when you were six years old. You, you were more interested in playing with toys, right? But one day, one day, whatever that day was, whatever age you you started having thoughts and desires, right? That's biology. Because they don't, they don't want children having sex and getting pregnant so that kids are raising kids. That's why your sexual interest doesn't peak up until a certain age. And that's why girls physically mature quicker than boys so that they can be primed to give birth before you're primed to provide and protect them. The girl in our school was, I kid you not, she was nicknamed the people's vagina. I'm not, I kid that is an honest to God name. Next time, next time you see Nick, Talk to Nick. Ask him. Go. Hey, Nick. Who was the people's vagina? He'll he'll message you back. There's, and you know what? Kids simping for girls in middle school, like that. That's how they learn it. I I'm just realizing this right now. In and I'm putting it together. There were simps in middle school for girls, and it wasn't mm -hmm. for sex. It was for kisses, or attention. Yep. But it was still the same thing. Absolutely. That's how and they learn it. 
You, so you have to, you know what? You owe it. You owe it to any kid who's displaying that simp behavior in middle school to correct it quickly. Absolutely. So, so, so it, it, it makes logical sense. Like, hey, man, I'm sacrificing for the good of everybody. Women are out here to take from everybody. Or you could be Maddox. You could be Maddox and sacrifice for other people's sacrifices. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Maddox. I, I, I remember when Nick told me about that, dude. I said, oh, fuck me, man. This is what it's come to. All right. Well, that's it for the emails. Let's do a quick wrap up here. All right, everyone. Thank you very much for listening to this episode two of MGTOWN Podcast. Catch us on YouTube. Catch us on Libsyn, MGTOWN.Libsyn.com. Subscribe to our Patreon, our subscribe star, but not our only fans. Drexel, final thoughts from you. I still don't understand this shit. <laughs> we'll catch you next week. Peace. Peace.